Welcome to Great Talking Entertainment. I'm your host, KJ, and this is the podcast where we review movies and TV shows from all your favorite superheroes, including Marvel Comics and DC Comics and much more. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talking Entertainment official channel, baby. Let's go. Now, as we continue on for the new Disney Plus series by Marvel Studios, Ms. Marvel, this is an episode three review, and this is a spoiler. So, you have not seen it, go ahead and pause this. Before you go, though, give me a thumbs up to help this channel grow. Go watch it, come back, and then listen to my spoiler review and tell me, guys, what you guys think about this show. So, let's get into it. So, in episode three, this is an action packed episode with mate with a like an emotional trip and also an inspiring eye-opening episode that has a lot of good quotes um, a lot of feel-good moments and for you know the hardcore Marvel fans or just who's people who just really into the Marvel shows there's a lot of uh, Avenger reference and they're definitely answering a lot of the questions from the last couple of episodes and I'm telling you what, this was like a really great episode just because, like I said in the beginning, it had a lot of like inspirational quotes and like eye opening moments just for the uh, like the Muslim and the way Pakistanians live and what they believe in and what they stand up for and how like. Even though, like, damage control is investigating to catch, you know, like, Ms. Marvel and any, you know, vigilantes, because that's the same uh, group from the Spider-Man No Way Home film, etc., right? But it also it shows, like, there's a little bit of uh, reality of what happens in today's society with that type of culture. And I would definitely believe, like, this is a superhero who stands up I think little girls can look up to I think this is why people like superheroes because of like scenarios like this may happen in somebody's life and this this is a part where people do wish there was a superhero or they need someone to stand up for them and like Miss Marvel right here is a definitely good example of somebody we need in life and so that's why I think people will enjoy this episode because there's some things that people could relate to in certain scenarios and I just think that's really awesome that uh, Marvel and Disney's really really uh, how do I say uh, discussing this topic within a show or an episode so I definitely give them the big kudos to that because that is awesome I just think that's what yeah that's just really cool so besides that we know that uh, in this episode it talks about like how in the first kind of scene uh, Miss Marvel's uh, grandma and some of the people who are from the norm dimension they found the bangle on a dead body that you saw that had like a like a blue hand so it I would assume that's a creed because if since Ms. Marvel is very heavily connected to Captain Marvel and this is an episode that I thought okay now they're really connecting this uh this show to the Captain Marvel movie and I'm just gonna assume that is a Creed body. So, what does that mean? Well, if you go off the Captain Marvel movie, so they may uh, this word's been thrown around the uh, Jin. So maybe like you know different cultures, different years, different era, right? A uh, Creed on Earth has been called many different things, and maybe uh, Kamala's grandma or great great grandma is a creed maybe maybe she has a dna maybe 
she's not from Earth. I think if the Norn dimension is his own dimension, that's cool. That's fine because uh, just like the Soul Stone world, um, oh, I forgot the afterlife in the the movie Black Panther when um, T'Challa or anybody who gets the manual of the Black Panther drinks the uh, the the like the 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 flower thing that has the, like the vibranium that kind of made the Captain America shield in this and empowers Wakanda, right? They go in the afterlife in a way where they meet the ancestors, the people who have passed away, who held that mantle, and maybe it's like connected to that, or the the afterlife in the in the Moon Knight series where you know this is where you go, and obviously there's loopholes to get out of that, so it could be one of those. I think that's more likely because they're building something really big with that and I think I think there's another world another dimension within this uh, cinematic universe for this story I think I think there's something bigger and I think it has to do with like the god the Marvel gods are gonna make a comeback or are gonna appear in live action Marvel shows or films and they're going to do something really big with that. That's why I think why they're doing this. But if I had to go with just the Captain Marvel movie and connect that movie to this whole show, I would say like the Creed body, I think some of Kamala's family members are actually Creed and they made of live just a regular life. It's not like we don't know if all the creeds are bad. We don't know all the creeds are good, obviously. But if I had to put a hunch on this, I would guess like maybe some of the creeds didn't like how their planet was being dictated or they're changing the rules or whatever, right? So some probably escaped their planet and went to Earth to live somewhat of a regular life and they made a fell in love with humans or whatever. That's a possibility, too. But that's that's all they they didn't really unveil it. But we know that there was a dead body of a creed, just because we saw the blue hand. Now I could be totally wrong, which is very possible. So, uh, so could she be a creed? I don't know. Um, this is a dead body, and they haven't really shown no creed blood yet. So, cause creed blood is blue. I believe. So, and then we go to Najama, or Naja. I hope that I pronounced her name right. She's evil, she's determined, and she's wanting something. So, she wants to go back to her, her dimension, because she's a djinn, and she wants to go back to Nor with her people, and she is the mother of uh, Carmen, and they need Carmel, uh, Ms. Marvel to open up the gate, but they don't she they didn't she left out the part that how dangerous this could be and it could be a big explosion and what i what i think is is that she i think she's trying to combine i think she wants the door to be open where everybody everybody from her dimension nor n o o r wants to come over and they take over this world and make it like nor where the, the door is open and everybody can come in and change and have a new another dimension a whole another life and make it the way they want so I think there's something like that and as you see when she crashes the uh, Kamala Kamala's uh, wedding not Kamala's wedding but Kamala's brother's wedding uh, she she's willing to uh, do whatever basically and I just think that if she well I don't think she's dead I don't think she's dead I know she I know she went away but I don't think she's dead dead so I think I think there's they got something else for her um and then let's talk about her culture uh Jin what's your supernatural so what I think 
is that I feel like I said in the beginning, I think gens are another way of saying they're creeds. And I think that wherever Captain Marvel's at now, that's where she's at with them. Because I think the creed is such a bigger thing. And I think Marvel Studios is, has big plans. And I think this is going to be a huge tie-in to the next uh, Captain Marvel movie with that. So that's all I really got to say about that. Another thing I really like about this episode I just want to bring out is Nakia. Uh, she now she's an official on the, she's officially on the board with the with the Muslims, and I think that's really cool. I think, like I said, I think they're building up to have her have her big moment, and there's really nothing I got to say. I don't think she's a scroll. I don't think she's gonna become an agent, but I think she is somebody who's gonna be a very big activist. While Captain uh, or Miss Marvel does the superhero, I think she's going to be the hero of in the politician world within the uh, MCU. So I think they're going to use her for a bigger part, a bigger role. But I don't think she's going to become a superhero within like like the way Miss Marvel is. But I could be wrong. Uh, the wedding that that wedding was very interesting. Uh, this this one I really like about this wedding is just the uh, how even though Ms. Marvel is trying to be a hero, she's still being blamed for the messing up. She's still making bad decisions, and it just shows her how she's still trying to stop being a rookie. And I really enjoyed this. Like this is a hard lesson of she pulled the fire alarm. She ru- she didn't just ruin her brother's wedding. She ruined another person's wedding who's having a a traditional wedding but what I like about that besides that I also like how this show showed how uh, a Pakistanians uh, weddings are it's somewhat traditional to a modern day wedding but I really like the the dancing I really like the, the it felt like very close very inside type wedding I felt like it was a spiritual connection I felt that that was really cool and I think you know somebody who's not like me who's not really very informed or well knowledge about that type of culture I think that's really cool about how they do weddings I like how they have to commit to they in their vows they commit to more than one things and they had to say I do like three times right and I didn't think that's really cool like I said but you can tell they're having fun yes their their life is can be very strict their life can be very disciplined but I think at the end they're trying to show but in all that they are still regular they still live the regular lives and this is just how they live and I just think that's really cool and just like that, before the wedding, when Ms. Marvel was talking to uh, the guy of the, uh, who kind of, I forgot the, I I'm going to butcher the place, but the temple, their version of a church, Amadi, uh, he was just saying like, I like that quote, he's like, he was kind of like, uh, you know, it's not, if you're good, you just do good. And I think, like, and then it just leads up to this wedding, but this is Kamala's trying to learn like being a hero responsibility like she this is like she's she's the Peter Parker she's the Spider-Man for this thing and I think this that's just really cool about that so that's what I really like about to the whole wedding from you know before the wedding to the wedding and then obviously we get into a superhero moment where the Jin's are coming to get uh, Ms. Marvel to open up the gate and but Carmen like he was like look they're evil they're gonna kill you and they don't have they don't care so it was a huge battle but luckily Damage Patrol captured them and Ms. Marvel got away so I think that's fine I think what that explains is just that her trying to balance out the secret identity and her regular life 
and she's still a teenager so she still got that so you know I think I think that's really cool she you're watching her grow you're watching her become the true superhero of that uh with the ending explaining after uh Kamala's uh bangle activate her and a couple other people including her nani her grandma uh see a train and I wonder what that train means who knows but I think I think this train the image of the train to me is going to lead up to a uh, like maybe a past they're going to show a, I think the next episode would be a flash a flashback of of a uh, of an event over there with uh, Nani uh, Miss uh, Ms. Marvel's grandmother and I think it's going to show what happened I think it's going to be a lot of what her family is maybe and I just think this episode like I said was so good and I think it was very educational very inspiring and I think this is where this episode to me just showing where Ms. Marvel's at now she's learning but she's not there yet but like look at Nikita she's very she's the same age as her but she's a little bit more mature than Ms. Marvel and and then she finds out that Ms. Marvel has his powers and she's upset that Bruno knew but I think this is where Ms. Marvel has to figure out okay she hasn't learned who she can and cannot trust but I think in this scenario, the people who she should be trusting is her family and her across her friends. So, you know, we'll, you'll, I think the next episode is going to show who's going to know her true secret identity and who's not. And I think the, uh, the, her, the Muslim community is going to have her back. That's what I think it's going to go to. So I definitely like this episode. If I had to give this a one out of 10, definitely giving it an 8 it was a great episode it, it reminded me of a classic Disney Channel show um, I don't think that's a bad thing I think that's a good thing and no it wasn't very Marvel-ish it wasn't like a Mar- it didn't feel like a Marvel movie or a Marvel show but it did it did give you like cause like I said this is a teeny bopper type show with a high school life and high school drama of course so this is more of watching her become the woman, become the superhero. So I'm okay with that, and I think that's really great. So, yep. Yeah. So that's all for my review. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment Official Channel. Please subscribe, hit that notification button so you can always be up to date with all my latest content. So thank you, and peace.